Welcome to the Volume 2 Northcote Heavy Horse Centre video. We're sure you're going to enjoy watching some clips of your favourite horses over the next 28 minutes. Robert. We begin in Lincoln in 1991. The organiser of the show depicted a pageant in Nettleham, a local village, in 1905. Everyone was in costume. This is Robert with Ebony. Ebony, as you know, began the centre in 1988 after he arrived back from London where he'd worked for Young's Brewery for about seven years. Hello, Jay. Uh, I saw a lot of the show. Welcome back. That was a pretty good show. That was a pretty good the village shop included a saddler, a wheelwright, of course the blacksmith, the bicycle repair shop, a tailor, a cobbler, and an undertaker. <laughs> This was the last big public appearance Ebony took part in. Towards the end of the year he was filming with Jeremy Irons in Norfolk uh, and then unfortunately he died um, at the end of December 1991. A wonderful character. This is not a purpose made video and we apologise for the quality of some of the film that follows. These are copies of scenes kindly donated by supporters. We hope you'll appreciate that the subjects are totally unique and this is the only film available. Oh, 
through before we stop. Uh, we've got a bit of an obstacle here going through the fence here. Jupiter here is one of the main characters of the centre. He's a skewball heavy cob and about 16 and a half hands high. Turn the window down, are you alright? into the sunset. Unfortunately that carriage was destroyed by burglars in 1994. We shan't see it again. This is a little village about 10 miles south of Spilsby and we were invited to go there uh, for this particular event a few years ago. We're going to do a musical drive display. And there's Goliath, and Bonnie and Admiral Jupiter. It took us two trips to get the horses done. Probably volunteers for that particular day. Nevertheless, You can let the shafts down. You've then got the hooking the You've got one at each side. Put the end link onto the hook at the back. Okay. Right, thank you, boys and girls. We'll turn him around now. Stand well clear. Henry. So, Casey explained what to do. Let's see if it can be done. Okay. Don't wait. The dogs are already aboard. Oh, you're doing fine. 
Look at that, straight in. Good old Henry. If you advance, he'll advance. You're in charge. If he moves, if he moves, run like John Wayne. It, isn't, it really isn't easy. If you lose these, to leap off here onto the horse's back. <laughs> when he's travelling at high speed. So it's all aboard and off we go. No, close it, please. If everybody on here weighs a stone, the horse is pulling just over two tons. That is going on. Look at that. Never thought we'd see that again this year. Shelter, you know. Yeah. Yeah. As I told the last year, if you watch Song of the Trade next to me a week ago, you're now going. We're coming to the spot where we turn round and head back and uh, we'll do a gallop now. Mike also filmed one of our popular musical drive days. We don't do this particular event now because we need an awful lot of help to clean up afterwards and we just haven't got the time. Also, the old horses that were taking part would get too excited if they heard the music and saw the youngsters doing this particular event. There's some good shots of Goliath and Bonnie. Now, Bonnie, of course, died in September 2000. seems to have gone a little bit astray. Uh, now. <laughs> the one in the far side is going into the trees. successfully complete it, you get a certificate.
they didn't have this feature when we visited it the other day again but maybe they only do it in the height of the season Well, that was very nice. We enjoyed the music too. Now we're going to join Golly and Cracker side by side now. Look at the so we don't know which grass it is. Uh, uh, we haven't done much, much of this summertime. Um, we're going to Andrea, where's the rain feet? Bring them in here for us. We're going to join Golly and, uh, and Cracker side by side. Now when Golly first came, we were going to go. Then, uh, we're back at the ranch, we can see the Shetland ponies. And we'll be coming back into the stable shortly to see a demonstration of a thrashing machine. Meanwhile, they're still at it on the field. And I think they've all done a great job. Under Keith's instructions, it's not anybody that's handled horses before. And quite deservedly so. Round of applause. Excellent demonstration. And the wind is getting up again. Visitors to the centre will know that the horses love to be the centre of attraction and stand and pose for the photos. Yes, it's photograph time and time to present the uh, people with their certificates. We've got a short film now of visiting Cracker at his original home in Somerset, very early in 1992. Can you go around once again, please? Yeah, do you want to go around the other way? Or? Yeah, that's fine, you're all right. Yeah. Come on, We're checking a cracker out to see what he's made of. The next part of the process is to watch him pulling something heavy. It's all part of the training of teaching him to work in a wagon or pull heavy farm implements. later in the year now, not far from our home base. Uh, we've gone to collect some hay for the horse's feed, it's about three miles away, and Sammy had to bring the load back on his own, because Cracker didn't like the idea of pulling the heavy weight. Ready? Ready? 
as you might have gathered, we almost lost the camera there. Crackers bringing up the rear. It took us almost a year to get him to actually pull heavy loads and loads of visitors. So now, of course, he loves it. Here we've got Jacob, and he has fans too, and this is just for them. short clip here of cutting winter feed. We don't use this machine so much nowadays, it takes a lot of labour. It's a straw chopper built uh, by Fosters of Lincoln in 1944. The red thing of course is a Ford Major tractor, it should be blue. Um, but the straw chopper produces uh, horse food. It was originally used by a contractor who travelled the countryside, probably using a steam engine. It takes about five men to operate the machine. Um, and we used to use it once a week. It makes chop. Uh, we oat straw is used, it's very digestible for the horses and they love it, mixed with molasses and sugar beet. The straw is fed in at the top very tightly, it goes through that drum where there's five big knives, it goes onto the riddles at the bottom and it's shaken out at the front um, and the good chop goes up an elevator and into the banks. Here's the riddle and though that's all the waste uh, straw coming out the front. There shouldn't be a lot, that looks very good. And we'll come up to the elevator next and the banks uh, with the food in ready for use. this time and here the arrival of the season of mists and mellow fruitfulness means that all is safely gathered in for a community who still mark harvest with a real passion. So how many horses have you got here in the There's 15 altogether, little and large pan, there's the small ones like the Shetland there and there's Golly um, who is still the second tallest living horse. Why is he here? I mean, what's well, his story? He came uh, about three years ago because he was very poorly. Wanted some special care and attention. Now, what's all this about him being a, a bit of a, a national paper star? Well, the poor chap fell over. Um, <laughs> his, his back legs are very weak. Um, a couple of weeks ago, he fell over and couldn't get up. And as a last resort, we tried everything else. The fire brigade came to our assistance. Three fire engines, about 17 men. <laughs> uh, and eventually, we used a forklift to lift him up off, his, off the ground. So Goliath had his problems, but you've had some pretty huge problems of your own, really, haven't you? Yes, we have, Pam. Over the last three years, we've had two major burglaries under fire, um, you know, and really, it's, it, we've got over it. Whatever's kept you going through all of that? The animals, basically, and the countryside, and God. Um, the three things together are a marvellous combination, really. Many visitors to the Heavy Horse Centre have worked on the land themselves, and in spite of all the modern technology to be found in farming nowadays, their lives are still shaped by the rhythm of the seasons and the whim of the weather, just like generations of farmers before them. And what I remember of the people that I've met here is not just their realism, but their contentment, their harmony with each other and with creation. We bring our video to a close with something the horses enjoy and look forward to every day. It's time for the visitors to go home and the horses are free to do what they want to do best.
This is Goliath. He's been with us since 1991. As you probably realize, Goliath was the tallest horse in Britain from 1984 until 1991. The Guinness people didn't realize he was still alive. And this last year, we asked them to inquire to see if he was actually the biggest horse in the world. And in March, the year 2000, he received a certificate as the tallest living horse anywhere on this earth. Here's Goliath and he's followed by Solo and at the very end is coming uh, Bonnie, uh, Golly's big pal. Golly and Bonnie arrived at the centre in 1991 and they'd both been at a home in Sussex before coming to Lincolnshire. Now it's the turn of the smaller horses and ponies. Jupiter there and Hebe and the four Shetlands are kept away from the big horses for two reasons. One is that they would get bullied and the other is that they don't need long grass. And the big horses have the longer grass and these chaps have something a lot shorter. Uh, Jupiter and one of the Shetlands are very prone to laminitis and long grass is something they really wasn't have. Reggie and Benny bring this program to a close. Thank you so much for supporting the centre by buying this video. We do hope you'll come and see us if you haven't been to visit the horses here in Lincolnshire.